So what is heritage language and why should we even care to know? My name is Emily and by the title of my channel, you can probably see that being an adoptee is something that I'm very open about. In fact, processing my own adoption led me to want to learn my heritage language, Chinese. Now, once I started to use the term heritage language to describe the experience, others wanted me to go more into depth about what that actually meant, which is what we will discuss in this video, as well as the wealth of experiences other heritage language learners may have, because it can really be a roller coaster of emotions. We will also go over how you can support those you know who are going through a similar experience and where you can hear more heritage language learning stories from other learners. Now, by definition, a heritage is a person's ethnic or religious background, the countries, cultures, religious groups, etc., that a person's parents or ancestors came from. A heritage language, therefore, is a language that a child learns at home from their parents that is not the main language of the country they are living in. But I tend to define this term in an even broader sense, in a way. Anyone who desires some kind of a connection to where they, their family, their ancestors were born using language learning as a bridge to bring them closer to their origins. In my case, I use my own heritage language learning to process a lost identity and a place about where my ancestors that I will never know came from. So I'm not reclaiming the identity presently that I lost and wanting to be of another nationality in any sort of identity crisis. But I know that a lot of other language learners that I've talked to who are doing the same thing have that intention. So just be aware of the very big range of experiences these kinds of language learners can have. Also, if you do want to hear more about other heritage language learning stories, jump onto my podcast available on Google, Spotify, and Stitcher. I also upload these to my YouTube channel, so make sure you hit the bell and subscribe if you have not to stay updated on when those come out. But that's definitely something to check out after the video if you are interested in more. So a lot of heritage language learners come from a full range of backgrounds, as I've stated before. Here are just some examples. Coming from a child of Spanish-speaking immigrants growing up in the U.S. Veronica quotes, we came to school speaking another language and it wasn't celebrated. It wasn't cultivated. It wasn't protected. You're then put on a path to losing your home language and a path to monolingualism, even with those cultural resources there. Other heritage language learners don't have to be immigrants, but they can want to reconnect with a part of their culture or their previous generations in their family where a language was lost. According to Fran, who was a daughter of an Italian-American family, she wanted to reclaim the Italian heritage language after it was lost two generations earlier. I was born into an Italian-American family. My parents spoke Italian to each other in private. It never occurred to me that Italian must have been my father's first language. He was born here in the U.S., but his parents came over as adults. I didn't have any interest in Italian as a child, but when Gabrielle, my daughter, started learning Italian, I got an interest. I'm an Italian-American, but I felt so un-Italian the first time I went to Italy. Another example would come from a Chinese adoptee who who was adopted from China by white parents in the U.S. I began my life with loss. Growing up as a Chinese adoptee in the state of Maine, I felt like an outsider. I had a constant need to prove my whiteness and conceal all other aspects of my identity. I returned to China in the spring of 2019 for an intensive language immersion program. Whenever non-Chinese foreigners spoke even a single word of Chinese, they received instant praise. Yet when I spoke, people just wondered why my Chinese sounded so bad. Judging me by my looks, people expected me to be fluent, which at times made me feel like there was no room for mistakes. As for me, I am also a Chinese adoptee raised in a white family, and I'm learning my heritage language currently. As I'm stating before, I am personally not doing this in order to reclaim an identity. I am using it to process a lost identity and something that I will never get back. And even though I'm a beginner in Mandarin and I have not gone out into the real world trying to talk with other native Mandarin speakers, I fear a lot of what Bia is talking already about in her example. Now, all sorts of mental barriers and feelings can come up while learning heritage languages. Feelings that most likely people who are not heritage language speakers of that language will ever experience. Here are just some examples. Feeling shame, feeling disconnect between where you grew up and the ties to the heritage of that language that may or may not have involved dismissal, rejection, any sort of trauma. One can also feel like one doesn't really fit in when speaking the heritage language with other native speakers who do look like you, but you're always just knowing that you're 
heart disconnect makes you still totally unrelatable to them. One can also experience an identity crisis of sorts, really not knowing where you want to belong, where you want to belong, but you find that you're not accepted by either side of where you grew up. Also keeping in mind how the world chooses to categorize you based on how you look or how you act and define where you should belong according to them. So what can we do? How can we help if we know someone? Be willing to listen to them first and foremost. If they want to talk about it with you, but do not push them to say anything if they do not want to. Keep in mind, there is an extremely large range of experiences and really nuanced emotions that heritage language learners will face. It can be an incredibly sensitive topic and not everyone will be as open like I am on this channel about talking about what they experience. Be sure to validate them if they do want to share and just always ask before giving unsolicited advice to someone who you most likely will never share the kind of experience that they are experiencing. And for me, I wish that some people would just simply listen to what I'm saying. That in a way makes me feel validated just knowing that they have their full attention on me instead of trying to share advice coming from a place that is well-intentioned, but at the same time, they're coming from a place with me knowing that they do not share any similarity to my experience at all. And it just seems like they want to fix something and be helpful, which which I know is a very human tendency to do. I feel that as well. But no matter how well-intentioned someone can be, giving this kind of unsolicited advice can also still feel invalidating for the person re receiving it and opening up about really nuanced experiences. Because even advice of how to think something, fix something in a sense, will never take away the past experiences that led this language learner to learning their heritage language in the first place. Those just need to be acknowledged first and foremost. And most of the time, personally, I'm not looking for any sort of solution that anyone can give me because I know that for the most part there really isn't one. I just want solidarity and validation in the midst of all the uncertainty that I face while learning my own language. There are also many factors that will determine when and if a language learner really wants to learn their heritage language or not. Some will have experiences that require them for their best interest to wait to learn. Some will never learn this language and some will jump right in and start learning from a really young age. And the reason that I'm highly highlighting this on my channel is that I love learning about others' heritage language learning stories. I think that these stories and really these stories that make us so human behind our languages always get buried beneath the language acquisition tips that are endless online. I'm also a big proponent of using these very human experiences we all have to our advantage in language learning because they require us to really look into ourselves and reflect. I really truly believe that getting to know your most authentic self and honoring that, whether that be through learning a heritage language or not. That will be your best tool in pursuing anything in life, language learning included. Another great podcast recommendation would be talking to grandma if you want to learn about even more heritage language stories that I didn't mention here. Also, if you do want to keep following me on my language learning journey, if you are an adoptee yourself, if you know someone who's on a similar journey, or if you are just simply curious about what it's like for me to learn Mandarin, make sure to give a like to this video and subscribe and turn on the bell so you can stay up to date with all of my progress that I will be uploading very soon. Thanks for sticking around you guys and see you later.